Good afternoon, morning, evening, everyone. TGT Media is an entertainment industry interview podcast where we interview the creative people from the entertainment industry. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt. We are joined today all the way from down under, uh, and I will spare the horrible Aussie accent that I have, um, with two amazing, talented, creative people from Presence Films. We are joined today by David Steinhoff. How are you doing today, David? I'm fine. Good. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for for joining us this early in your morning. And of course, we cannot have um, a wonderful show without a talented actor in his own right. We have Shane Rodrigo, uh, of course, uh, you've seen him on The Matrix among other films too. How are you doing today, Shane? Excellent, excellent. This is a very, very early uh, Sunday morning. <laughs> Not that early, but uh, uh, fantastic. Thanks for having, having us. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. You know, this is film month. This is something where I know, I know I'm interested in. I know fans of the show, fans of your movies, as well as present studios, uh, are very interested in. Uh, so let's jump right into it because, um, we are talking about your film, which is an adaptation of a book called Journey of the Seeds. And David, how would you give us a little, uh, a little summary as to this particular book? Well, you know, about Oh, two or three years ago, the author, Carol Bow, came into our Fox Studios office and said, I've got a graphic novel. And in fact, this is the graphic novel. And uh, she said, look, is there any chance of getting it made into a movie? And I had a look at it, and it had some you know, fascinating concept art, mainly about this, uh, this fantastic character, Tuan, who was the hero of the story. And I said, yeah, okay. We can do that, but being a producer, of course, I said, we'll have to make some changes. And so, um, essentially, that's where it started. And we then said, well, how are we going to develop this work? At the time, we were watching uh, the collapse of, as we discussed earlier, the ancillary uh, markets for distribution of DVDs and so forth. And it was very difficult to raise capital. And we thought what we need to do is start to look at how we can engage the fans in this process during the development. So we came up with the idea of a fan-based web development program to develop the project. (laughs) You know, that's amazing because, uh, you know, there's been a lot of um, sites that have started this model. But, I mean, yours is this particular site, Journey of the Seeds, that I've been to, is a a very developed community, a very professional community in that regard too. And everyone is helping in some way, shape or form to, to put this project into a reality. And that's wonderful to see. It is, uh, you know, initially film professionals may feel, okay, we don't want to collaborate with fans, but that would be a mistake because fans can participate by sharing their thoughts on a character, whether that be an idea in our think tank, or whether it be an image via Pinterest, they can start to demonstrate what they feel this character might look like. And we're a great believer in the collective intelligence. We think that if you collaborate with the global fan base and with, of course, the film professionals, you'll get a far better pro- far better product. Most definitely. Now, jumping over to Shane here, of course, we don't want to disclude you in this conversation because why would we have you if we didn't if you weren't here? So. Be He's really, that. and I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> you know, be <laughs> the audio is a little long. Though. Being a, being an actor that you are, being a, a very versatile actor that you are, I should say. Um, how did you get a hold of David? How did you get involved with this project? Uh, I've known David for twelve years now. Uh, and yeah, we just we just gel creatively. Same same comic sense of humor. Yeah, we just get each other. And, uh, I suppose. and uh, there's a few other projects that we've been looking to uh, to work on, uh, and still will continue to work on. But uh, Journey of the Seeds came up what, what now three years ago, two three years two, ago. Three, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know, at the same time, when the momentum of, of Lord of the Rings coming through, uh, 
Matrix, not so much that was, that was tailing off, but the trilogies, you know, all of them, and the, the fantasy. Uh, There's a hunger for it. Hunger, there? Real hunger for it. Real hunger yeah. for it. And it just, you know, you just see that this particular project, the enormity of it at the end of the day, um, I mean, it's, it's such, such scope for something very, very special. And in the three years that, or two or so now three years that the project has been developing, so to its technology, you know, so what might have been um, uh, perceived as being able to be created three years ago or, or not could well be done now or God knows by the time this, this, this gets up. It's easier to do it. It will it's be easier cheaper. to do it, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, and just how much further advanced the uh, technology Will be with, with CGI, etc. Uh, and so to jump on board and and um, and play a character with meat other than your typical rambunctious pygmy or something like that. Uh, which He's done a lot of pygmy roles. Pygmy roles. <laughs> And that's why I set the chair shorter initially because I didn't want to confuse the audience. They know him as a pygmy. pygmy and that's right. Right. You see what's right. going on there. You know, normally the hair tied up with a bone for the nose. <laughs> the bone. That's the thing that they they yeah. recognise him when he walks down the street because of the bone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just it's healing. It's healing. healing. It's healing. Yeah. Uh, so the yeah. So the the, the the chance to be something something so special. You know, you look at the. Um, of the friends who were, who were part of, um, of the Rings trilogy, uh, you know, it's good like enough to be part of the Matrix trilogy, trilogy, and it really is something special, you know. And uh, yeah, so we're we gonna do any ring jokes, we're not gonna do any ring <laughs> jokes, are we? <laughs> Can we skip the ring jokes? <laughs> the thing about uh, the thing about Lord of the Rings, right? Okay, you got this trilogy there, okay, but because Journey of the Seeds is a transmedia project. Because we, sh we move across from web development, webisodes, feature film, and long-run TV series, there is an opportunity for actors to have a long-run journey and build a career through the project. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, there's the chance that an actor can leave the project and come back to it, that you can have a very large cast over a long period of time mm -hmm. participating, mm -hmm. and also break-offs. So you, you you can I've got people saying to you what about this idea what about that idea and I go okay it's not per the the core destination we're going but just like with Battlestar Galactica you can move off this way and move off that way so that you can get the talent uh, taking it to a different direction and getting their own spin-offs. Hmm. So, uh, uh, sorry. No, no, I was going to say um, that that's actually that uh, provides versatility for a project that could seemingly die after you know a, a season or two. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. In actual fact, I've, I've requested that my character name be changed to Bo Brady, so I get at least twenty-three years out of the uh, at least out of the run. Um, so. Followed by a sex charge crime, or so, so, something like that. <laughs> what right. Something like that. It, it's still early in his career to, for that to happen. So, <laughs> um, when it comes though to, and we'll stick with you, Shane, for a second. When it comes to being an actor with the amount of, of talent that you have, you know, do you find that a, a role that you're playing now with Journey of the Seas, do you feel that you will be pigeonholed into this, or do you have creative freedom? No, it's just certainly not. Certainly not pigeonholed. And, and let's be honest, you. You take a role um, uh, that has meat, or you're sensible to take a role that has meat, uh, and that will stretch you creatively. Uh, I can feel a ring joke coming on anytime soon. Anytime, yes. anytime soon. The um, so really, really, um, uh, yeah, stretch you creatively, and ideally that you know that has legs, you know. Uh, and if it is going to pigeonhole you, uh, typecast you for the rest of your life, well, then you hope to Christ it's, uh, it's paid well <laughs> previously. <laughs> so this is where the producer comes in uh, and uh, makes some money. No, in all seriousness, no. 100% uh, confident that uh, you know, you'll be seeing big things from the project. In, uh, in the coming year. 
you know, I find this this is a, a very interesting project because I've seen I've seen the various actors that are involved with this. I've seen some trailers as well with this, and it's a, it's a, a such a large world that that um, that the author has built for this. It's amazing that you're you're able to visually put this into an amazing film or, or series of along that line. We allowed people. We allowed for the idea of getting it wrong to get it right. And in the initial trailers we created were exceptionally simple. Mm -hmm. What we did was we sent out to all of our global community, just send us in your footage, anything at all that features the, the words begin, begin the journey, and we'll cut it into a trailer, a very simple trailer. That was the first version of it. We didn't put motion graphics or anything particularly spectacular, but we do have a pretty groovy soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole idea, Buck, was to establish the mood and way of collaboration. That was the thing that was yeah, important. And exactly, exactly as you just said, collaboration from a, from a viewer point, uh, really quite something to be watching the final um, series done and pick up, that was my idea. That was my idea. You know, uh, really something quite, really quite special about that. You know, or I had input in that particular area. And this is very important regarding our, our policy of living credits. In that, if mm. you look at the traditional credit system within the film industry, you've got to have, let's say, as a screenwriter, 33% participation or more before you mm. get a credit. Mm. Yet, in truth, the average, say, studio film project may have gone through 25 drafts. So you're not getting credited. You may be paid, but you're not credited for that work. In our work, everyone that participates is credited as we go at each step. And we're, we're introducing a ranking system so that the community can see exactly how much you participate, what your rank is within the community. So I call this the gamification of the project. You could call that a transmedia or a new way of addressing transmedia with a global audience. But doing that allows the fans to gain participation and see how they see their credit in the project as well as the film professionals. Sounds like achievements, actually. It is. Mm. It is. But, you know, you think about uh, Gen Y or any of the, g the generations now moving into digital and they're used to that. That's part of their digital native tongue or language or how they work in the medium of games and so forth. Uh, so at the end of the day, we're speaking a language which is a common tongue in the digital era. The one thing I'm finding interesting, and, and I'm just going to take a step back, speaking of games and films um, or TV series, Defiance is a series that is out now that is trying to utilize both television media as well as the video game platforms to kind of seamlessly or somehow combine those two avenues to create a larger concept of community. Um, you know, it, it seems like your model that you have with, with everything is, is actually a better concept overall than what maybe Defiance is attempting to do. Well, Defiance comes, I won't judge what the team behind Defiance is doing, but I will say that our approach is wholly organic in that it's very much like a Philip K. Dick novel. Uh, Philip K. Dick used to use a, spilling, a spinning Mandela. He used to say, I'm not going to lock off my plot. I'm going to come up with six ideas. I'll spin the Mandela. Wherever it goes to, that's where I'll take it. Now, we've got an idea of the big picture of plot, but a lot of the journey into plot is devised by the team members. So one of the key elements of Journey of the Seeds is we start off in this world and there is a uh, inciting incident whereby there is a meteor shower, very much to pay homage to, say, Day of the Trippets, uh, whereby in Day of the Trippets, of course, everyone goes blind, but in this meteor shower, it delivers to the Earth a parasite, an alien parasite that works like some parasites we have on this planet and it enters into the mind of people and takes control of their mind and all it does is simply free their inhibitions. They have no more inhibitions and they do whatever they want to do. This pays homage to uh, the movie Forbidden Planet whereby a very intelligent species 
uh, brought to life a system whereby they could manifest anything they could dream. And then in one evening, they fell asleep and the monsters of their nightmares came to life and wiped out the entire species in one evening. Well, in this story, essentially, humanity is free of any inhibitions and it can do whatever it wants to do. And this only affects the Northern Hemisphere because of the way that the comet delivers its, its trail. And so the Northern Hemisphere in one evening is wiped out, leaving just the southern or parts of the Southern Hemisphere, the islands, New Zealand, Australia, maybe Hawaii and so forth, Tahiti. And these are the remnants of humanity. So how did I get onto that? I've lost the plot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what I was saying. I was saying that as the inciting incident, the point is that we didn't come up with that idea. That's not a presence idea. That's one of the presence team members' ideas, Tony Verko. He came up with that idea. And we've also got other team members, uh, Virginia Higgins and, uh, 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 oh, gee, who else was there? I know Virginia came up with the idea of resonance, which is on our website. But we went with Tony's idea, not because it was part of the original story or that we came up with it, it's because it was the best idea. And just like that Philip K. Dick novel idea of spinning the Mandela, that's the path we took. And I like the idea that it's organic and that we can we can find a way using the team rather than imposing this is what's going to take place. You have to go this path. You know, Shane, with with this type of freedom here and the input that you're you're giving to this, um, you know, obviously you're you're excited, you're passionate about this project. You know, as an actor, why did you feel the need to get involved with this? Besides David's charm and charisma, uh, again, just in, um, immersion of of character of world. Uh, Escapism, uh, the the yeah part of, of well initially it was pitched as a trilogy, now um, into a, a, an ongoing series, which just you know ideally uh, you still have the same production values, all that. Well, you get longevity and and yeah, I just I. I think every actor loves escapism, you know, uh, escapism into a world, escapism through their character. You know, certainly the past uh, past years, I used a lot of the, the, the characters that I played that were angst-ridden uh, as a catharsis to the anguish that I was holding on to, you know. From his porn star days. That's right. <laughs> Right. right. Uh, uh, oh, I've still got the videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe and that'll then, be the bonus section. And when technology was right, he didn't waste time transferring them from beta. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. It really is. You know, that's what friends are for. It certainly helped us to achieve discount rates for his acting, I can tell you now. <laughs> it was sort of the oh. Put them online, you know. Yeah. Oh, blackmail. Wow, that's just wonderful. <laughs> that was actually one of the titles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you've seen it. The, uh, the, yeah, so, the, uh, so yeah, so uh, escapism, being part of something special. The, the, um, the, the team that develops or that you see developing, you know, through the fan base, um, and the creative, well, we, we well I, 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 sorry, actually, well, Shane, then, you know, every everyone wants to, to have the ability to, to be something else, obviously, um, when it comes to being an actor, but is there anything else besides being an actor that you want to maybe contribute to this, this project, like maybe being a writer or a DP or assistant director, anything along that line from maybe behind the camera side? Oh, certainly creative ideas. Uh, and once you know, really sit down and immerse, uh, and immerse into the development of it, there'll be, you know, getting my head around, around what is available um, with, with the technology present, you know, uh, CGI. I mean, that, that fascinates me. Uh, 
as to what can be done there, you know, green screen, you know, or if we choose at the end of the day with the availability of budget to actually build set, you know, uh, which would be tremendous. I mean, a lot, a hell of a lot easier to work with an elaborate set, you know, uh, uh, and be tactile with your surroundings uh, as opposed to um, the challenge of, of uh, imagery on a, on a green screen. You know, you got that flexibility. You asked before about, or other, sorry, you asked me before about, did we intend to shoot it locally? Who asked that question? I just did just then. Oh, okay. And I said, you see, and this is the point, we've got a global community. So we can shoot wherever we can shoot during the development phase, at least. Certainly at the moment for our day one project, which we've got on the site, we're inviting people to send in content from all over the world. Uh, but as far as finding the solutions to how we can shoot things, uh, I was speaking to director Richard Gibson, and he was talking about a problem we have with light in Australia. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, you're locking at a very low light, and we can't achieve that here in Australia. So uh, he said what he was going to do was shoot in a crater, in a mining pit. Okay. And I said, well, okay, what are you going to do for your backgrounds? He says, well, we're going to print them up, just like with the Matrix. Mm -hmm. We're going to print them up on giant linen screens, uh, vinyl screens, etc., and put them in the background. Just like they used to make backdrops in very old movies. Mm -hmm. This is what he's going to do for his film. And he's got, he's got this, and of course, with all, with all comp compositing, you're trying to create three atmospheres if you want. Your, your force, your, your immediate area, slightly behind, and then distance. The camera can achieve this amazing trickery to get that outcome. Mm -hmm. So we've got to find ways of achieving that and doing it as cheaply as possible to get the project up because of the price price pressures on producers. Mm -hmm. That's a tough tongue twister to uh, <laughs> to get the project up. So uh, it's it's quite interesting where we can shoot, how we can achieve things. It's possible to do this all over the world. Mm -hmm. They're only Canada's cheapest tips. Yeah, I hear the Canadians will do it for nothing. Yeah. Almost, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I got you guys on for free, so it works for me. So it's all good. <laughs> we, besides, we pay everyone in Tim Hortons coffee and donuts, so it's all good. Uh, uh, um, you know, when it comes to though this this project budgetary constraints, as as you've mentioned in the past, you know. How do you work on on a shoestring to no string budget? I mean, that, that's got to be very difficult. And luckily, uh, maybe I'm I'm answering this myself, but your community is really filling in the gaps that you need. You've got three steps there for your initial development work. Some people, uh, the collaborators, will send in their content they create for free or to achieve credit for or some sort of relationship with the project. And then the next step is commission projects, whereby we raise some money from the community through our campaign stamps and donations and so forth. And with that, we can commission some work. Now, often we can't afford to pay full rate or even scale, but we can afford to pay part of it. And someone says, look, I've got a gap. I'd like to do this. I'll take it on. When you go to production, of course, it's because you've already established the worth of the project and there is a desire from the community all over the world to see it. And therefore, what we'll do is from that, you can raise money to produce the film because there's already you can flow on to long run TV series and so forth. And, uh, and therefore, it's possible to make it. And from within Australia, we have a thing called the producer rebate, which is a 40 percent rebate back to Australian producers which allows us to contribute that 40% to the budget of the film, which makes it a lot easier to make. But to do it, you have to establish the fan base. To establish the fan base, you have to start with what we're starting with. Normally, distributors will uh, market and advertise to try and develop a fan base. We're doing it the other way around, starting at the very beginning. Interesting. Um you know, Shane, with with yourself uh, being an actor and a very talented person, as I mentioned in, the, in previous minutes, um, you know, what personal challenges have you had to face when it comes to working on a project like this? Uh, what personal challenges? Well, I haven't worked on something with this 
as, as potentially en enormous as this is, you know, what now, 10 years ago, well, the Matrix, it was, it was, I mean, a massive project, but my injection into it, to be fair, was not, you know, um, was literally a few seconds on, on screen time. Uh, it so, was the best part of the film, though. No, think, well, yeah, yeah, so no, definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the, so, for me, the, uh, yeah, to just be, to, to, to be part of, of, of something of that enormity, as I said, a, a, a cult, uh, there was, yeah, it was something very, very special, but there was no, I don't have to think, you know, the, the, the onus of the franchise as such, wasn't on my shoulders, you know. Uh, upon you know adopting a, a leading part here, well, then yes, there'll be you know, there's a, that added pressure. But at the end of the day, you just be, you need to be true to your character, true to the other characters around you, and uh, the rest will take care of itself. You could even argue to find help to find that character, because every Every uh, storyteller, whether it be the writer, the director, the actor, the post team, they're all in the business of storytelling. And the actor can get something, get a script and say, now, wait a second, I got an angle on this. I think we can explore this character a little bit more. And often people are fearful of the actor changing something or any part of the team changing something. The issue is, where is the story? How are we telling it? What is this character about? How can each stage of the storytelling process add to it and enhance it. How does the collective intelligence work towards the benefit to make a rich project that is engaging with people? And so the actors, actors bring, a, actors are stars, stars because they shine. They shine, they bring something quite dynamic, which the rest of the team do not. They are a very important part of the storytelling process. So uh, I would say that for you, finding that character, evolving that That's character, right. is, is very important. Um, I'm just trying to think, is there anything that I haven't brought up to either either of you uh, that you'd love for people watching this as well as fans of Journey of the Seeds that you'd like them to know? No, certainly keep the, keep the uh, ideas coming, you know, flowing, uh, you know, characters, it's interesting, we're touching on with Defiance, I've not seen Defiance, but just, uh, you mentioned about the link between the development of, of, of video games, or that, it's almost, uh, you know, that's way down the track, but the development of avatars, you know, new characters that, you know, um, you would like to see portray, you know, actual, um, Actual drawings, uh, yeah, <laughs> biographies. It, it, it's a little mind blank. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, actual characters that. Okay, well, it's not just the creative team that have that um, have come up with it, and now you're um, you've got to sit there and watch it. It's again from a viewer point. I'm sitting there watching the series, and then it's just like. That's my creation right there. Mm, mm. That's that, 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 that's that's my injection right there. Even if it's even if it's you think a costume design, for example, every yeah. all right, and someone's trying to work out a costume for a character, and they've come up with this sort of palette of colours, this certain fabric design, and so forth. And I'll give you an example: crop uh, crop circles, mm. crop circles you see in here uh, in our world. And we think, okay, it's a creation or it's this or it's that or whatever, etc. We created a mythology associated with crop circles that exists in our other world. It's a new mythology that all of a sudden says, okay, now that's what crop circles are all about. Okay, now this is relevant because we embed the crop circles into the costumes, into the symbology, into the architecture, mm -hmm. the landscape mm -hmm. of the world. Now you may say, well, okay, how is that relevant? The, the point is that that one piece of the puzzle enhanced costume, enhanced production design. That one piece of the puzzle was advanced 
uh, into the story through the collective intelligence, and we created a whole new dimension of the work. So by collaborating in this way mm -hmm. with the whole team, we keep advancing the project all of the way. So that's um, very important. Something we didn't mention is, what's it about? <laughs> Don't you, that, that's usually my first question I ask. <laughs> We kind of just jumped right in in general. Well, okay then, what is what is Journey of the Seeds all about? Journey of the Seeds is about the captain of a road building uh, construction company who journeys into a parallel universe. And in that universe, he discovers that he's a warrior prince destined to save and enslave people from tyranny. In that world, he discovers he is drawn between two main characters, a king and the king's opposition. And he has a unique talent that both desire. Uh, initially, he thinks he's having a psychotic departure. And uh, this keeps happening to him until finally he starts meeting people in the other world that he knows from his world. And he realizes he's not having a departure, but this is actually happening. And the foundation of his story is that it is essentially the next step in the evolution of humanity. It's where we go to next that advances our species on another level altogether. Wow. <laughs> that's that's in depth. That's that's awesome actually. I'm I'm trying to wrap my mind around it a bit. That's um hmm. So hence hint, so circuit so hints uh, I mean it's obviously just the tip of the iceberg there. Um, but where you could go with it um, conceptually, uh, with the development of, I was saying, you know, uh, CGI, etc. Uh, it's really, really something quite special. Mm -hmm. Really mm -hmm. something quite special. Uh, and yeah, I would have loved to have seen it uh, as you know, a massive trilogy. Uh, and maybe this still step uh, down, down the track, but, uh, but, but, but I, I like the angle now that it's going with longevity of a series. There's uh, no doubt about it. Absolutely. I, I think it will go as a feature film, as the pilot and the TV series will run off the feature film. That's more than likely the business model that will manifest. But yes, the CGI, the potential, even for the transitions. You may remember a film called Highlander by Russell Mulcahy. Mm -hmm. The thing that was quite unique about this, apart from the soundtrack by Queen, was the fact that they had uh, Russell Mulcahy worked out these exceptionally dynamic transitions, and the transitions were you were like, "Oh my God, that's amazing!" And I remember this, and I realised that for our story, one of the key components is transitions. How do we get our character from point one, uh, from from this world to that world, in a way that is not trite? That is unique in each way, but it conforms to an audience's expectations of the genre and the story itself. And so we've got an entire department dedicated to nothing but trans, and we've got an absolute kicker, which I'm not going to reveal, an absolute kicker for how he gets from point A to point B in the very first transition. So I won't say anything more about that, but I can say <laughs> that it's very important. Uh, no, I, I love it. As soon as you mentioned uh, feature film to a TV series, I immediately thought Highlander, which is just one of my favorite series of all time. So, I mean, um, but the, yeah, that was very interesting. The the transitions with those films, as well as the TV series, there's a lot of moving shots, which trans transitioned between time periods and everything like that, too. It was a, uh, interesting uh, uh, cinematography in that regard. Oh, wonderful. Uh, the direction that Russell took it to, uh, a cinematography, wonderful, but the direction choices of how he achieved those transitions, such a smooth transition, uh, and was, I believe, I remember the initial scene in the wrestling arena uh, whereby he transitions up into the medieval world or into the prior world, and that was a golden transition. I said, I'm going to steal that. I'm definitely going to steal that. <laughs> Uh, it, it's appropriation. It's not stealing. It's totally yeah, different. It's standing on the shoulders of the greats before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
No, I, I think that's wonderful. I, I'm looking forward to to contributing myself with the, whatever I can do for for the series for the for the uh, the website as well. Um, but David Shane, thank you guys both so much for taking the time to to be on the show and talk about this wonderful, amazing film to web series to everything that you have transmedia wise for Journey of the Seeds. Good. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks so much. TGT rocks. <laughs> Love it.